Hi, I'm Dr Zoe Waller and I'm a Senior Lecturer in Chemical Biology at UEA. Welcome to my YouTube video describing one of my recent research publications. The aim of this video is to explain it to a general audience. The paper itself is open access and the links to find it are on the YouTube webpage. The title of the paper is Redox Dependent Control of Imotif DNA Using Copper Cations. This work was done by a team of scientists at UEA from the schools of Pharmacy, Chemistry and Biological Sciences. So if you think of DNA, you might know that it is our genetic material. DNA profiling can be used in police work to help identify people, and DNA testing is becoming more and more popular for people to learn more about their ancestry. The structure of DNA is widely accepted to exist as a double helix, which looks like a bit like a twisted ladder. However, DNA can form many different structures, and this is what this research publication is about. Alternative DNA structures are thought to potentially play a role in the development of genetic diseases, but can also be used in nanotechnology. The potential changes in shape of the DNA can be used as an on-off switch, which has many different applications. So what was already possible? We already knew that if you take a small fragment of DNA, which has a particular sequence or code, you can change the conditions to make it do different things. So let's say this piece of DNA is at neutral pH. If we add acid, the DNA folds up into a tightly packed four-stranded structure called an eye motif. Depending on how much acid you add, this can happen in less than a second. We can also unfold it. To do this, we need to get rid of all of the acid, so we need to add something to neutralise it, which we call a base, or alkali. We add the base, and then we get the DNA unfolded again. This system can be used as a switch, as the DNA in the two different conditions has completely different shapes, so we can recognise this as on or off. On, off. We previously showed that you can also change the shape of DNA into a different structure called a hairpin. To do this, we just need to add copper two salts. This expanded the DNA into two switches instead of one. There is another YouTube video to explain this in more detail. Please have a look on my channel. So when you think of copper, you might think of copper pipes or pans, but copper can also come in the form of salts. For example, copper sulfate is a common addition to chemistry sets and quite often used in schools. You may actually recognise all these familiar blue crystals. This is an example of copper two salts. Copper can also form a copper one salt as well, and these are typically off-white in colour. If left in air, they will convert into the copper two salts, and we call this process oxidation. So what can copper one do with DNA? To work with copper one, you need to make sure it won't form into copper two. This can happen in the presence of oxygen or air. So we did all of our experiments in conditions without oxygen. We took a small piece of DNA, we add copper one, and the DNA folds into a structure called eye motif. Then if we expose this to air, where there's oxygen, the copper changes from copper one to copper two. This converts the eye motif into a hairpin, a completely different structure. We can make this change by just adding oxygen. Interestingly, we found that you need almost 10 times less copper 1 to form eye motif than you need copper 2 to make hairpin. This means that we can use a very, very small amount of copper 1 to form eye motif, and if we expose it to air, copper 1 will convert to copper 2, but there isn't enough copper 1, copper 2, to make the hairpin. To do this, you need a lot more, so it then unfolds again. It does mean that if we have used enough copper 2 to make hairpin, we can add a reducing agent, such as a sodium ascorbate. This is a chemical similar to vitamin C. Sometimes if you're cooking with apples, for example, the recipe will say you need to add some lemon juice. This contains ascorbic acid, or vitamin C. This helps prevent oxidation or browning of the apples. We're doing a very similar reaction here. Adding the ascorbate reduces the copper 2 into copper 1. We only need to add a very small amount, because you need much less copper 1 than copper 2 to see effect. Then we can see the change in DNA from a hairpin structure into an eye motif. So now you can not only change the shape of DNA using a change in pH, we can also use copper cations and exposed to oxygen to have the same effect. Or if there's enough copper to, we can switch into a hairpin. If we want to resume to the original form, we can use a chemical called a chelating agent this is a chemical which is the perfect size to capture the metal cations so they will not interact with the DNA. Our findings open up different triggers we can use to change DNA shape using copper cations or oxygen. This is applications using 
DNA and computing for DNA-based logic gates. One of, com D one of computing's advantages of using DNA is it allows calculations to be carried out in parallel if different types of logic gates are represented by different ingredients. Microsoft are working on using DNA for storage and computing at the moment. A nice recent development in this area was published by Dash and co-workers earlier this year. The different triggers we've found could also be used to change the shape or properties of a material in response to the change in the presence of copper or oxygen. Previously, iMotive DNA has been used to make responsive gels. A nice example of this from Tian's group was recently published as well. These different conditions could also be used in nanotechnology to make small devices made from DNA. We call these DNA nanobots or nanorobots. Earlier this year, a nanoscale robotic arm controlled by electric fields was published in the journal Science. Our new conditions could be used to create small DNA-based nanorobots which could detect copper cations or oxygen. We're very grateful for the support from the Eastern Academic Research Consortium and the BBSRC. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to tweet me or drop me an email. Take care. And